In today's lecture, we are going to learn another intermediate differentiation technique. It's called implicit differentiation. Implicit diff. What makes it implicit? Let's find out. First of all, let's take a look at the group of equations on the left-hand side in the blue box. These equations are explicit, which is the opposite of implicit, by the way. So let's make a note at the top that these are explicit equations. Okay, that is the start, and make sure that you know that these two words are the opposite of each other, explicit and implicit. Well, what makes them explicit? Let's take a look here. The main characteristic for this type of equations is they have y alone on one side of the equation. So as you can see, this one has y alone on one side, same thing here, and same down here. In this case, it's all on the left. So let's write it down. For explicit equations, y has to be alone. y is alone on one side of equations. Well, that's it. That's all it takes for an equation to be explicit. Now, you have to keep in mind that y that we have right here, this y, has to depend on x. This y right here, y has to be a function of x, which means y depends on x value. In terms of variable, y is considered to be the output variable. So y is the output, x is the input, output variable. And sometimes we call this type of variable dependent. Y is also dependent variable. Now let's try to find the derivative of these equations. So let's try to find dy by dx. First order derivative of y with respect to x. In other words, y prime. OK, let's start with this first one right here y equal to 3x squared minus 5. And we want to find dy by dx. This one is easy by now. And once again, this is equal to y prime. Now we diff the right-hand side of this equation. We diff these terms. OK, let's start with the first one, 3x squared. This one, we use the power rule. So 2 comes down, it becomes 6 down here. And now the power decreases by 1, so I have power of 1, which I can take it out. Now I diff minus 5, that is a constant. I diff that, I get 0. So this is it. This is the y prime for the first equation. No problem here. Now let's take a look at next one. Next one, we want to find dy by dx again. dy by dx, and this is also equal to y prime just in case. Now we want to diff this. Once again we diff the right hand side of the equation. We diff these terms. For this one I think I see a function inside a function. I see secant and then inside the secant I see another function which is 10x. So I'm going to put a box around 10x. So this right here. Now it becomes secant of some terms and inside the box I have this 10. So what you see right here is a function within a function, a composite of functions, which means that we need to use chain rule. So for this one, we need chain rule. So we are going to diff from the outside, leave the inside alone, and then we continue to move inside. So I'm going to diff the most outside function first, which is secant. All right, you diff secant, you use the trigonometry rule. You diff secant, you get secant 10. So I'm going to get this secant and 10. And I have to leave the inside the box alone. So this is left alone. Secant and also 10. Diff secant, you get secant 10. While the box is still the same. And inside the box, also the same. We have 10x inside the box 
and also 10x right here. Now, this is not over. We are done with secant outside. Now we proceed to the one inside. We need to diff 10x right here. You diff 10x, you get secant square. So you have another term right here, secant square from the second layer. And this is just x right here. And now you have to multiply these terms together. And there you go, you have the derivative of the second equation. And that is dy by dx using chain rule. Let's try the third one, y equal to square root of ln x plus 3x. What about I put it like this? I think it's easier to work on. What about I have parentheses instead of square root? And inside I have ln x plus 3x to the power of 1 over 2. Power of 1 over 2 is the same as square root. In this form, I think I see a function within a function again. I see these two terms together inside a box, and this box has the power of 1 over 2. Once again, we have a composite of several functions. We use chain rule. So we have to apply chain rule again. So we are going to start with the most outside function, which is the power of 1 over 2. So we want to find dy by dx. If power of 1 over 2, power comes down. It becomes 1 over 2 down here, and then we leave the inside alone. Whatever is inside is untouched, and then the power decreases by 1. So we have minus 1 over 2 up here. Minus 1 over 2. And the inside, still the same. Ln x plus 3x. Okay, that is the outside. Now we move to the inside. We diff these terms. All right, second layer. You diff ln x, you get 1 over x. So second layer, I have 1 over x. And then I diff 3x, I get 3. Okay, these have to be together. And then I multiply this with the previous term. And there you go, we have dy by dx. What about I combine these terms to be nicer to look at? So I have 1 over x plus 3. And down here, I have 2 square root of ln x plus 3x. And that is dy by dx for the third equation. As you can see here, when we differentiate explicit equations, we diff normally, like the way we have been doing. So let's make a note up here that when you see explicit equations, when you see y alone on one side, you diff normally. Now let's move on to the set of equations on the right hand side. What you see right here are implicit equations. So let's make a note that these are implicit equations. Unlike the explicit equations, where there is only one y alone on one side, here we have y at multiple places, and that is the key. Multiple places of y. So let's take a look at the first equation right here. Let's find y. We see one right here on the left-hand side of the equation, and another one on the right-hand side. And not just that, we see this square. So definitely not one y alone on one side, Definitely not explicit. Not explicit equation. What about this one down here? Let's find y again. So we see this one right here on the left-hand side and another one on the right-hand side. But not just that. We see this cube right here. So definitely not explicit again. What about this one down here? Let's find y. So we see this one y on the left-hand side and nothing on the right-hand side. However, we see this square right here. When you see square, it means that it's y times y. y times y. So this is definitely not one y alone on one side. So once again, this is not explicit equation. And that is the main difference between implicit and explicit equations. 
So let's make a note right here that for implicit equations, we have y at multiple places. So y at multiple places in equation. And you also need to keep in mind that y right here has to depend on x. So the same y, y depends on x. In other words, y is dependent variable. Now, if I ask you to differentiate these equations to get dy by dx, the first order derivative of y with respect to x, can you do that? So let's take a look here. Find dy by dx for these equations. Some of you may look at these equations and don't know where to start. They look different from the ones we have been working on so far. And obviously, we can't diff them the way we used to. So let's take a look here. For explicit equations, all we need to do is to differentiate all the terms on the right-hand side of the equation. So here we diff 3x squared minus 5. Same thing here. The terms on the right of the equation, secant of 10x. And same thing here. We diff square root of ln x plus 3x. But here we can't do that. We can diff just the right-hand side of the equation. That doesn't work anymore. And this is when the implicit differentiation comes in. We need this technique in order to diff this kind of equations. So if you have implicit equations, you need implicit diff. So to keep it simple, if you have an explicit equation, you diff it normally. But if the equation is implicit, then you use implicit differentiation. This also means that you are supposed to determine the type of the equation in the first place so that you know what to do. So let's make a note up here that the first step that you are supposed to do is to determine whether the equation is explicit or implicit. Or implicit. So that you can choose the right way to solve your equation. Now let's move on to the next slide. In this slide, we'll see what an implicit equation looks like when we plot it. So let's take a look at the left one, this one. The equation is y squared minus x equal to 0. When you see square like this, you know right away that this is an implicit equation. And if we plot it, we get this graph, a parabola on the side. Now let's pick a value of x right here at this point. And you can see that at this point, we have two values of y. So first one up here, let's call this one y1. And this one down here, y2. So one input, but two outputs value of y. This curve is definitely not a function. So make a note that not a function. However, we can use the implicit differentiation to find dy by dx or y prime for this kind of curve. And it will be the slope of the tangent lines at that particular point. Here we have tangent 1 and tangent 2 down here. So we'll get two values of y prime, one for the tangent at the top, tangent 1, and the other for tangent down here, tangent 2. So let's make a note, two values of y prime for this example. Now let's take a look at this one on the right. First, let's take a look at the equation. We have this one right here. x cubed plus y cubed minus 9xy equal to 0. So you see cubed right here for y. And also another y, definitely implicit. And if you plot it, we get this curve. Now let's check it out right here at x equal to x0. Right here. At this point, we have three values of y. So first one up here, y1, 
and second one, y2 right here, and last one, y3. So, not a function as well. One input, we have three values of output. So make a note that you know it's not a function, but it's still a curve. Still, you can find dy by dx by using implicit diff, and it's going to be the slope of the tangents at these points. So we have three tangents here. First one, second one, down here, and last one, something like that. This means that in this case, we have three values of y prime, three slopes. So three values of y prime here. Now let's move on to the next slide. Same thing here, we have another implicit equation. So let's take a look. Here we have y square equal to x square plus sine xy. You see square right here, you see another y, you know it's implicit. And this is the plot for this particular equation. Once again, if you want to find dy by dx somewhere in this curve, you can do that by using implicit diff. Now let's move on to how implicit differentiation works in the next slide. When it comes to the procedure, implicit differentiation is quite straightforward. So let's take a look here. First, you need to differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x. So make sure you know this, underline this, with respect to x. And you have to diff both sides at the same time. So make a note up here that you diff both sides simultaneously. Or in other words, same time. Now, there is one thing that you need to keep in mind, and this is very important. Sometimes you need to diff y inside your equation. And when you do that, you need to treat y as a function of x. So let's underline this too. Treat y as a function of x always. So we have y equal to fx, meaning that y depends on x. Or, there is x inside y. x is inside y. And when you have x inside y, sometimes you have to apply chain rule to y. So let's make a note here. Sometimes you need chain rule when you diff y. Now, the next step that you need to do is to collect dy by dx and then solve for it. So second step. Collect dy by dx and solve for it. dy by dx. And that is it. This is implicit differentiation. That's all it takes. Now, let's try this procedure on the example down here. Example number one. First, let's take a look at the equation that we have here. We have x squared plus y squared. So the first location of y is right here. And it's equal to 3y. So we have the second location for y. We also have this square right here. At this point, we know right away this is implicit equation. And if we want to know y prime or dy by dx, we need to apply implicit differentiation. So make a note, apply implicit diff. Let's do that down here. Let's start with the original equation. We have x squared plus y squared equal to 3y. And now we apply the first step, differentiate both sides with respect to x. So first step right here. So we diff the left-hand side with respect to x. And now we diff the right-hand side at the same time with respect to x as well. So let's diff the first term on the left-hand side. Let's diff x squared with respect to x. What do we get? This one is easy. This is power rule. So 2 comes down to the front. And now the power decreases by 1. So I have this power of 1, which I'm going to take it out again. So that is it for the first term. So this one, go to the first term. Now I diff the second term. 
I need to diff y square with respect to x. So here I need to treat y as a function of x. Keep in mind, treat y as a function of x. Which means that there is x inside y. So I'm going to look at this y as a box. So it's a box with x inside and it has a square outside. So I have to apply chain rule. So here I apply chain. So I diff the power of 2. So I'm going to get this 2 coming down right here. And then I keep the box the same. And inside the box, unchanged as well. So I have y inside. But I'm not done yet. I need to diff what's inside the box. I have y inside. I need to diff that. Diff y with respect to x, I get dy by dx. So that is the second term dy by dx from the second layer. And now I need to multiply them together. And that is it for the left-hand side of the equation. Now we do that on the right-hand side. Let's diff 3y. First of all, 3 is going to go to the front. And now I diff y with respect to x. y with respect to x, so I get dy by dx. And now I'm going to move things around and collect dy by dx and then solve for it. I'm going to move this term right here to the right hand side. So I'm going to have this 2x equal to 3dy by dx minus 2y dy by dx. And now I take the common term, which is the dy by dx, to the front. So here on the left-hand side, still the same, 2x equal to, and now dy by dx to the front. I collect it right here. And what's inside this parenthesis is 3 minus 2y. And now I can find dy by dx over here. So dy by dx equal to 2x divided by 3 minus 2y. And that is it. That's how you use implicit differentiation. So that is the answer for example number 1. Now let's take a look here. When you apply implicit differentiation, it's possible that you can have y in your expression. You can have y in your dy by dx. That is okay. Let's make a note here. Normal to have y in dy by dx for implicit diff. So if you see this, don't be surprised. It's OK. Now we move on to the next example in the next slide. In this example number 2, we have this equation. And we are supposed to find dy by dx, or y prime. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is to check whether the equation that I have is explicit or implicit. So, let's check it out. This one. Let's look for y. The first y that I see inside this equation is on the left-hand side, right here. And I see another one on the right-hand side. Not just that, I see this cube, the power of 3. So, from the look of this, this is definitely an implicit equation. So we know this is implicit. And in order for us to find derivative dy by dx for this type of equation, we have to apply implicit differentiation. So we are going to apply implicit diff. And let's do that down here. Let's start with the original equation. We have 2x cubed plus 3y cubed on the left hand side and on the right hand side we have 5x square y. And now we apply the first step of implicit differentiation which is to differentiate both sides with respect to x at the same time. So let's make a note, the first step. Diff both sides of equation with respect to x. 
simultaneously. So let's do that. We diff the left hand side with respect to x and we do the same on the right hand side. Diff this with respect to x. Now the next thing I'm going to do here is to distribute the differentiation to the front term and the back term on the left hand side of this equation. So this derivative goes to the first term at the front and the second term at the back. So let's apply that. So here we have derivative with respect to x of the front term. So we have 2x cubed right here plus derivative with respect to x of the back term. And we have 3y cubed here. Now let's work on the right hand side of this equation. We are supposed to diff 5x square y. What about I start with the 5 to the front and then I keep everything the same for now. So I still have this d by dx of same term x square times y. Now let's start with this term. Let's div 2x cubed with respect to x. This one is easy. Power rule. Power comes down, it becomes 6. And now power decreases by 1, it becomes square. Plus, now we need to differentiate 3y cubed. Let's diff this. As you can see here, we need to diff y. And we need to treat y as a function of x. So let's make a note back here that we need to treat y as a function of x. And what kind of terms do we have here? We have 3y cubed. What about we put a box around y? Now we see a box to the power of 3. And inside a box, we have y, which depends on x. So we have a function within a function, a composite of several functions. So we need to apply chain rule. So apply chain rule, we div the most outside function, which is the power of 3. So 3 comes down and multiplies with the 3 that we already have. It becomes 9. And now we keep the box the same. And inside the box, we have y. Now the power decreases by 1, so we have 2 right here, square. And this is not over yet. We are supposed to diff the inside layer, which is y. Diff this y with respect to x, we get dy by dx. So we have this dy by dx from the second layer of chain rule. And we are supposed to multiply them together. Let's make a note down here that these terms are from chain rule. Now we move on to the right hand side of the equation. This is equal to, we have 5 at the front, and then we are supposed to diff this x squared times y. This is going to be tricky because we have x and y together. So I want you to look at them this way. Let's put x squared right here, times y. And I'm going to put a box around x squared. And also around y. And we have multiplication between them, a product. Let's take a look at the first box. This is a function of x, so I'm going to call it u of x. So this one, u of x. And back here we have a box of y. And as you know, we need to treat y as a function of x. What about I name it v of x? So what you see right here is a product between two terms that depend on x. To diff this, you need product rule. So you need product rule. So let's do that. Let's find du. So du equal to, we are going to diff x squared. Of course, we have 2x. What about dv? It's equal to dy by dx. Now we use the formula for the product rule. u dv plus v du. Okay, let's work on that. So u is equal to x squared. So we have x squared right here. Times dv, we know that it's equal to dy by dx from here. So let's put dy by dx right here plus v equal to y. So let's put y in. 
times du. du is equal to 2x. So let's put 2x right here. Now I'm going to multiply these terms to make it look nicer. So we have 6x squared plus 9y squared. And we keep dy by dx at the back. dy by dx right here. Now this is equal to so front term we have 5x squared and we have dy by dx right here. We have plus 10xy. Now we try to group them together. So I'm going to move everything that has dy by dx to the left hand side of the equation. So I have this first term right here. 9y squared times dy by dx And the next one from the right-hand side, I moved it over here, so I have minus 5x squared with dy by dx at the back equal to, on the right-hand side, I have this 10xy minus 6x squared. Now, I take the common term to the front. I have dy by dx at the front times so inside we have 9y squared minus 5x squared. And over here still the same, 10xy minus 6x squared. So we can solve for the dy by dx over here. dy by dx is equal to 10xy minus 6x squared divided by 9y squared minus 5x squared. And that is the answer for this example, number 2. Not too bad, right? Now let's move on to the last example of today. Here once again we have an equation. And then we are supposed to find the second order derivative of y with respect to x, y double prime. You can write it this way d2y by dx squared, same meaning as y double prime. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is to check my equation, whether it's explicit or implicit. So, let's check for y. I see one y right here on the left-hand side, and nothing on the right-hand side. However, I see this square, so I know that this one is definitely implicit. This one also implicit which means that I need to apply implicit differentiation. Implicit diff again. Now let's work on that down here. Let's bring the equation down here. 3x squared minus y squared equal to 16x. Now we apply the first step of implicit diff which is to diff both sides with respect to x at the same time. So we diff the right-hand side with respect to x, and then also the left-hand side with respect to x. OK, the next thing I'm going to do here is to distribute this diff to the first term and the second term. So let's diff the first term. This one is easy. 2 comes down, it becomes 6 at the front. Power decreases by 1, so I have x alone here. And I have this minus sign. Now, I'm supposed to diff this y, but I know that y depends on x. Once again, treat y as a function of x. There is x inside y, which means that I'm going to put a box around this y, and I'm going to apply the chain rule. So diff a box of a power of 2, so power comes down to be 2 at the front, and I keep the box the same. Inside the box, I have y. That is the first layer. Now I diff the inside, I diff this y. With respect to x, I get this term, dy by dx, and I multiply them together. So that is the chain rule. These two are from chain rule.
Now, on the right-hand side, let's work on this. We are supposed to diff 16x. This one is also easy. We get 16. Okay, so we need to know the value of this. So I'm going to keep this on the left-hand side. Let's do that over here. So I have dy by dx. And we have minus 2y at the front. And now everything else I move to the right hand side. 16 minus 6x. And now I solve for dy by dx. dy by dx equal to 16 minus 6x divided by minus 2y. And this is equal to, okay, let's put it this way, dy by dx equal to 3x minus 8 divided by y. And that is the first derivative of y with respect to x. However, this is not what they ask for. They ask for y double prime, the second order derivative. So we need to diff this again. So let's do that. So now we find y double prime, which is equal to d2y divided by dx squared. So we start with this dy by dx that we just found. So we have this dy by dx equal to 3x minus 8 divided by y. Now we diff both sides with respect to x. Diff this with respect to x. Diff this with respect to x. So what we have over here, we diff the first order derivative, we get the second order derivative. So what we have right here is equal to y double prime. So this is what we need to know. Now we are supposed to diff this fraction right here, this fraction. But this one is going to be a little bit tricky once again because we have x and y together. So let's make a note. We have x and y together here. So we have to pay attention to this. What about we put it this way? Let's have 3x minus 8 at the top and divided by y at the bottom right here. And now I'm going to put a box around this 3x minus 8 and a box around y. So 3x minus 8 is a function of x. I'm going to name it u of x. And as you know, y has to be treated as a function of x, which means that I can name it v as a function of x. So what you see right here is a fraction between two terms that depend on x. To diff this, you need quotient rule. Quotient rule. So let's try to find du. So over here du equal to, let's diff this with respect to x, we get 3. Now let's find dv. dv, let's diff this. With respect to x, we get dy by dx. So for this one, equal to dy by dx. Now let's apply the formula from the quotient rule. V du minus u dv divided by v squared. Let's apply it over here, equal to. So we need v and we know that it's equal to y times du. Let's check it out here. du is equal to 3. So 3 over here minus next term u equal to this one 3x minus 8 so we have 3x minus 8 and next one dv dv is equal to dy by dx so we have this term dy by dx at the end times and now everything has to be divided by v square, which is equal to y square. Now let's take a look at this term right here, dy by dx. In this expression, it's unknown. However, we know from above that it's equal to 
3x minus 8 divided by y. So let's put this in. This is going to be equal to 3x minus 8 divided by y. Now let's continue over here. We have 3y minus 3x minus 8 squared divided by y. Everything has to be divided by y squared. Now let's simplify this. It's going to be equal to 3 divided by y minus 3x minus 8 squared divided by y cubed. And that is the answer for this example.